Um, hello, everybody. Um, quick introduction. So my name is Ted Lam, and uh, um, um, and uh, my colleague Jessica Chung. Uh, I'm personally also teaching at the university, at the Chinese University of Hong Kong, um, and our company is actually a seed technology company that we develop um, a blockchain and uh, artificial intelligence solutions for grassroots development. Um, I think uh, today's presentation is really going to focus on two parts. The first part is going to be two case studies. Uh, I think Jessica is actually going to uh, present. Uh, it's actually good about like a digital marketplace that we form in grassroots community. And the second case is going to be a digital uh, uh, a town hall uh, for this uh, 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 for the village to actually make decisions about their development. Uh, the 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 role of technologies in uh, in these two cases are. Uh, you know, the automation about the data flow, the automation of the uh, the capital flow, and also the automation of the supply or the good flow. Um, and, and I think we actually touch a few topics, for example, like digital citizenship, uh, digital identity, uh, like how, you know, uh, cryptography can actually creating a very unique types of, you know, um, 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 identity kind of situation on an online or a cyber uh, kind of public space. And at, the, and at the end of the presentation, I will also talk about the implications uh, of these two projects and what happened of that during the COVID time, because that's actually quite interesting. So I'll pass to my colleague, Jess. Thank you, Ted. So, uh, hi, I'm Jessica Chang. So uh, let me introduce the two cases uh, from our company. Uh, so the first cases I would like to introduce is uh, about the community currency in Hong Kong. So um, it's like a community self-organized local mutual support system online and offline before and after uh, during the COVID time. Um, so the concept of time-based currency has been initiated um, like a few decades ago and however the term time bank was uh, originally promoted by an American professor Edgar in US. So whereas in this system people agree to earn and spend time credits instead of money and when you spend an hour of an activity that helps others, you will receive one time credit. And when you need help from the others, you will then use the time credits that you save to pay for the service. So that's actually promoting like equal time, equal the value. And it's also advocating mutual help among community members. So when this uh, concept came to Hong Kong, what interesting is that it evolved into a response to economic instabilities during the time of financial crisis in Hong Kong 2008. So at that time, the time voucher uh, program itself was self-organized by local NGOs in Hong Kong uh, to help the community members to build local economy system to resist the global economic instability. So, so for example, like in Hong Kong, each NGO will help their community to launch their own time voucher as the local currency to exchange for their local products and services. And therefore you can find a pretty interesting local economy with neighborhood characteristics of ecosystem starts to emerge. So for example, like in Tin Shui Hui, uh, which is this area pretty far away from the city center of Hong Kong, it has a lot of farms and natures. So people there with the time voucher of Tin Shui Wei, they can go to the local food market to buy fresh locally grown produce once a week. So this actually helps to support a lot of um, local small farmers because now they are not only selling their produce to a normal market for money, but they can also expand their sale to a new group of customers who originally may not have the enough cash to buy their produce. So this new group of customers can be unemployed people, low income, single mother or new immigrants who can now contribute their time and also skills to exchange for the goods and services that support their daily lives. So however, this the existing uh, time voucher program is uh, there's a lot of effort for the NGO in the bookkeeping and also like managing all the um, the uh, time voucher transactions using uh, paper and manually. And it's, it's simply just hard to maximize the benefits of the time voucher program because there are not enough exchange happening within the community. So uh, what we did is actually partnering with the uh, local NGOs in Hong Kong. And we 
bring their um, bring their existing uh, system, digitalize their existing practice, and bring their marketplace online to facilitate a larger volume of local transactions, and to even facilitate cross district exchange. So this new public space emerged on a digital market where now community members can post their products and services, while on the other hand, people can also post their needs. And more importantly, how our uh, platform different from other e-commerce platform is that we uh, deploy so-called digital uh, decentralized identifications, which are actually various personal information such as their identity, assets, skills, and also um, needs, which could be verified by peers and community members to make the data immutable and also privately uh, protected by the blockchain. So during the COVID time, because of the shortage of the mask uh, supply and a lot of elderly, they simply just couldn't get out there to buy masks. So people self-initiate the crowdsourcing of materials and people with skills on this time, uh, time voucher platform to produce masks for the people in need. So eventually we hope to um, develop the platform to a social impact marketplace, which facilitates the matching and also exchange of validated social needs from the community and also like trustworthy social service provided by the local business and micro entrepreneur. Uh, the second case that I uh, will introduce um, is about a community development uh, project, uh, which is like a col collaborative development of micro scale public space in Myanmar. Um, so in this uh, project, there is a, um, there's a huge infrastructural uh, investment gap between the government and the community. So what we are trying to do is to uh, pilot this uh, digital platform for a community member to um, crowdsource, identify needs from their, uh, from their neighborhood. And also like uh, we also use this mobile app to allow the community member to claim the successfulness and also completion of the project after the project has been done. So for example, like in this uh, mini uh, public space, uh, which a, uh, a playground has been built. So after the project has been completed, community members, they can, they can then um, validate if the project has been built successfully or according to what they need. So, so what we hope is that this, um, this uh, digital platform can really advocate community participation, more transparent funding deployment, and also like more de democracy in the process of community building of the public space. Yeah, um, so I think Ted, you can conclude. Yeah, so just maybe just a very quick conclusion. Um, I think the whole uh, idea about the uh, work that we have been doing is to create a, the, the local community uh, economic resiliency. Uh, that means they're actually not only relying on a global economic system. So basically when there is a COVID lockdown, the entire globalism and the entire you know, supply chain management, the whole world has been broken down. So basically there is a lot of needs and requirements from local for people to you know, uh, understand how they can survive by themselves. And go down to the next one. So I, I think the, uh, the uh, entire programs that we are developing is actually moving from centralized. You know, people originally think about into a distributed uh, system. Uh, next, please, uh, uh, Jess. But, um, but eventually, we just find out that a distributed system is actually not working because when the COVID come in, it's, it's essentially just breaking down the entire global network. And then eventually, it's, you know, bring us to the a decentralized system, which is actually creating a very small scale sales of local communities. So, so basically there are always two scales of economic transactions. One is the global and the other one is the local. And when there is a crisis coming in, people at least have the freedom of choice that they want to participate in the global economy or the local economy. And that actually creating this economic resilience at the end of the day. You know, I think the last uh, uh, six months, there is actually like a 10 times increase of users in all the, the, the programs of the time uh, vouchers in Hong Kong. And they need to work on the farm and earn the token so that they can buy food. Or there are even like, you know, very interesting activities that people crowdfund the time tokens to help their friends for uh, buying food from a food bank. 
So, I mean, I think there's actually like, once this kind of public base is actually created, we are actually really, you know, creating this, what we call a micro design for agile adaptive change, because every single proposal is actually from communities, not from a researcher, not from a university, not from the government. And the second thing is the microservice, is that, you know, how small, how granular those services can be, so that it can be a huge amount of that, but very specific. And the last one is the, about the, the micro policy. It's not about a policy about a whole region. It's about a policy for my village or for this 100 people building. Like, can we creating a policy, a governance that can actually, uh, uh, actually be automated by uh, uh, the technology and creating the efficiency? I mean, I think that's the end of our presentation. Thank you very much.